Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to this next episode of Jim and Java. I'm excited to be here with you today. We just enjoy so much answering your questions and helping you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Love to have you join this ever-growing community of nonprofit leaders who are striving to get to the next level. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're able to subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have you uh, also click the bell to be notified of future videos. If you like this video, like what you heard, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure that if you also have questions that are unanswered, you can reach me at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Twitter. I'm also out on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and we would love to respond to your questions or just even address your comments. I'll address each and every question and each and every comment, and we'll try and get as much as possible every question on the air. So, anyway, let's just jump right into our question today. Our question today is from Ed in Rockford, Illinois, and Ed asks, we've been struggling to recruit board members. What suggestions would you have to help us recruit? Well, we've addressed this topic a number of times before, but to be honest, it really is an important issue, and it's one that every nonprofit leader struggles with. When you have to set up your, your 501c3, you have to give officers, so in all likelihood, you probably have at least recruited a couple individuals who've either agreed to be your board member, president, or, or secretary, but uh, those individuals may or may not be wholly committed. They may just have been names on some incorporation papers. But in growing your board, if you hope to be a successful, a profitable nonprofit organization, uh, and this might sound that might sound like an oxymoron, but uh, what I mean profitable is one that is thriving, is able to accomplish its mission, vision, values, is able to uh, fund the staff, and uh, you know might not be at the level that would be equal to a for-profit organization for maybe even the same position, but at least you're able to pay a reasonable salary to some individuals. And of course, we always use that term fully funded so that the efforts, the programs, the strategies that you want are funded. And so a board, a good board of directors really needs to exist for that to happen. And what happens too often is that individuals, leaders, founders of organizations will start with a board that is either normally just friends of the founder or in some cases just a rubber stamp for the board, uh, for the, uh, ch for the uh, president or executive director of the organization or founder. Uh, but really, you want a board that's going to be what I refer to as sort of an iron sharpening iron board. One that is not afraid to push back, one that's not afraid to challenge decisions that are made if they don't seem right, and also one that is gonna be creative, active, and very, very involved, and especially involved in the area of fundraising. Well, I've said many times it's so important for a board to understand their fiduciary rights. And what that means is their responsibility to not only manage the income that comes in, but help develop and raise the income that comes in. So those responsibilities are very important. Uh, very quickly, I just want to reemphasize what I've emphasized so often in this broadcast, just the importance of the life acrostic finding board members who are involved with their labor, their influence, their finances, and their expertise. Labor, influence, finances, and expertise. What I do is, in most cases, when organizations are starting out, uh, I will recommend that they find individuals who have the same heart and passion as the founders of the organization. As an organization starts to grow and you start to have more and more donors, I always like to go to a mailing list and go to donors because generally you're starting out already with individuals who like what you're doing, they've got a passion, and they want to give to your organization. And remember, 
the, the, um, the, the verse that comes right out of the Bible, which is where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Not where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be, but where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. And remember that that's important because it starts with the treasure and goes to the heart. And so finding board members from your list of active donors is a great way to start because you're going to grow their heart, their capacity to understand your organization as they start to give more and they start to get involved more. So I always start with that. I, I also like to look at what is the current giving level and capacity of the donor. Now, yes, there are individuals who, could give, who can only give small amounts of money who are very committed to what you're doing. But if you do have individuals who have large capacity uh, and their wealth is, is either medium, either higher income or great wealth, uh, those individuals should be challenged to be part of that. Now know this, that those are the same kind of people that are asked by every other nonprofit organization in your community as well too. But if they've got a heart and a passion for what you're doing, uh, you should at least challenge those individuals to see if they are interested and would be willing to participate on your board. Don't compromise your standards, your principles to get someone on your board. Look for those individuals who are willing to give their labor, their influence, and their expertise as well too. We know, and, and I've seen over the years, that not everyone can give at the same level financially. I like to use the term that not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. But I also know that not everyone can give the same amount of their time. Not everybody can give the same uh, amount of their influence. They don't know as many people, uh, and not everyone can give their expertise. There are just some things that people do that our nonprofit organization may or may not be able to use their skills and talents. But look for that balance. And I have, would have no problem taking someone who gives a little bit less to take someone who's willing to volunteer a little bit more or is well connected in their community a real estate agent, a ins an insurance agent, a car dealer who knows a lot of people in the community and they're willing to talk about your organization and introduce their friends to your organization, uh, but they can't give as much money. Those individuals are, are great. Um, oftentimes, uh, I'll have people ask me about what's the importance of the makeup of the board. Um, I really believe that just heart and passion and their ability to help to come uh, come alongside and undergird the your, your organization with labor influence finances and expertise is the most important thing. If you decide to choose an accountant, somebody with those skills, or marketing, those are all great skills. But just remember um, that uh, you don't have to have just a perfect mix on there. So hopefully, Ed, that answered your question. I'm so thankful for that. Uh, we're going to end this broadcast today. Uh, please, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Make sure you submit questions to, at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Also, reach out and follow me on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And until uh, our next broadcast, make sure uh, that you increase income and reach the goal of being fully funded. Thank you.